you know, I want to ask you something kind of talk to kind of get some perspective from you on something you just mentioned. Um, let's talk about demographics. Okay. So demographics, as far as kind of who owns, who owns what, you know, I'm, by the way, today's my birthday. Uh, I, I don't even I hardly even want to acknowledge that. So 34, 34, right? 34. Yeah. Actually, I'm 39. But then you would say, dude, you don't look really very good for 39. <laughs> no, I'm 54 today. Um, yeah, and I've got allergies that are killing me. I've, I'm on I'm on a whole pharmacy of, of allergy medicine. So here's, here's, what, here's the question, Zach. So talk about demographics, because you kind of mentioned that a minute ago. So I'll, I'll set the stage, right? For, for my group of, say, 20 friends, guys that I hang around with, literally there's, take me out of the equation, there's, three that own crypto and they started with Bitcoin, Ethereum. Um, and there's, let's call it 10 that are open to the possibility of, and probably will. And then there's like another eight. They're like, they're doing, they're, they're like this. They're like, oh, no way. And heck I'm getting into crypto. So right. what's your stance of that versus kind of, you know, your age demographic, you know, thirties uh, and younger millennials, et cetera, go. So I'm going to go philosophical a little bit you always fear what you don't understand. Right. And I think yep. that's really what it is. It's just a lack of education. So I think the people who are the loudest, you know, voices in the room that are against crypto are probably the people who know the less and, and oh, know, absolutely no less than, than we yeah. do. Right. I mean, and listen, we're learning every day. We don't have it all figured out. There's a lot of people that have been in this thing since 2010 and they know way more, especially from the tech standpoint and all that. But a lot of people just hear what the media puts out, right? Yeah. That, you know, crypto is not good, right? And and here's why. And like, the, so they just run with that narrative. Now, I think there's something else that happens too. Right now, if you're investing in traditional things in, in stocks and you have an IRA and you have a financial planner or, or an investment person that you go to, they're not allowed to talk about crypto. I know. It's crazy, isn't Technically, it? Technically, right? Technically. And a lot of the times, if they are talking about crypto, they're saying exactly what you said to set up this conversation is you don't want anything to do with crypto, okay? So yeah. just just don't even look over there. Right. And what do people do? They they they, they don't look over there, right? And they just reiterate but, but, the same message that their accountant said and the media says. that. But it's I want to stop you there. Are they doing that because... The person sitting on the other side of that desk who he can't sell you anything. He, he or she can't make any money. They I don't have a product to sell you yet. And I, and I think most people look across that table and they say, well, that's the professional. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the person who does this for a living. So I'm going to listen to them. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of times it's right when, when you're talking about stocks, but um, you know, interestingly enough, obviously I'm not going to oust his name or, or anything like that. My accountant, the reason why I went with him, Austin, and you know this, the yeah. reason why I went with the accountant I did is because he's an he's an investor in crypto. He understood MetaMask. He understood DeFi. He understood all that. So as soon as soon as I found that, as soon as I found a person that an accountant that that understood crypto, that's invested in crypto, I'm like, that's my guy because yeah. that alone is hard to come by. <laughs> I, I I concur. My accountant's not a crypto guy. Now he has a partner in the business who who is a crypto guy, which obviously helps, right? Yeah. But I, I think so. You, you raise an interesting cop topic, education, but do you think it's a situation where it will always be that generational gap? I actually think there will. And I think a lot, because because here here's part of it. The vast majority of people who are kind of managing their own money or have somebody managing it, they're really not paying attention. And they're just like, they're waiting for somebody to say, hey, you ought to buy Bitcoin. Hey, you ought to buy Ethereum. And we, you and I have talked about this a lot. So what's your final thoughts on that? Well, okay, so I'm I'm 33. So our, you know, aside from crypto, the last big opportunity was the dot com era, really, right? To make to make life changing wealth to to have. I mean, obviously, if I were investing when I was eighteen, just in the you know good stocks, good mutual funds, and all that. But most people aren't. Most people a don't have the money. They're not educated. They don't teach that in school, right? You have to figure all that out, and especially if you don't have parents at home that invest themselves. Like there, there's no, there's a huge gap there. Yeah. Right. So I think a lot of people that are millennials, my age and even and younger, obviously, they look at this as, wow, this is a vehicle that can allow me to retire. I read a stat the other day. Millennials, on average, need roughly now this is a, a household. So this is two incomes, 
you know, they need roughly $2 million to retire. Mm -hmm. Think about that. And I, and I think people are seeing, oh my gosh, I'm already behind the eight ball. I've got student loan debt. I've got credit card debt. How can right. I get there? How can I climb myself out of this hole? Well, one of the avenues is Bitcoin. One of the avenues is crypto because it offers the potential to make 10, 20, 30 times more than you can make in a stock in the stock market in, across 20 years. Right. And, right. And, and I think anybody who's sitting there on YouTube or on Google that's searching, how do I better my life? How do I, how do I create financial freedom if I'm 30 and I'm already in debt? They're going to find that. Right? right. But I think to your point, people your age are number one, they're just taking less risks, which they should at right. their age. And, and they're, they're just, they haven't grown up in it. Right. And they just, they just don't want to learn. They don't want to learn something new. 